In studio, we're back down to two mats now. We lost one. Last segment, Matt Mullinex. You know, somewhere John Gilstrap is in some exotic locale, and he's probably listening, or he's going to listen to us on replay, and I want John to know that I have my hydrogen water with me. <laughs> all, all is well, buddy. He's Enjoy leaving your today. trip. He's, uh, oh. Ultimately, well. he's going to wind up in Normandy, which is a place I'd love to go to, uh, but that's what, it's one of the things he's always wanted to do is go to Normandy. So that's uh, one of the ultimate uh, destinations uh, from his for his vacation trip. He'll be out, I think, two and a half, three weeks. Yeah, back in mid October. Thanks, of, thanks for telling me it's hydrogen water. I thought it was like some kind of lava lamp. You know, he could flip a like switch a on the lamp. top, and oh, you know, it would I'll be green or something in the middle. Or yeah, there you go. That's that's more of what I was anticipating. Look, look at the bubbles, Matt. Look at the bubbles. <laughs> that, those bubbles mean health. Yeah, that, he'll live forever with those bubbles. Connections Community Church wants you to know they're meeting at the old Musselman's Apple Plant in Inwood. They'll be hosting their 14th annual Community Plant Day. It's a free community festival, October 12, from 10 a.m. until 2, with food, music, pony rides, a petting zoo, kids' activities with prizes, giveaways, and an open house for you to see what's going on at the plant. So join them for Plant Day on October the 12th at 303 True Apple Way in Inwood. And Connections Community Church WV. Dot com is how you find out more. They had asked me to make a mention of that so everybody knows about it. Happy to do that, too. Our guest in this segment is Rick Thompson. Rick is uh, also, we uh, talked to earlier this morning, Marshall Wilson from the Constitution Party. Rick also represents the Constitution Party, too, running for the House of Delegates out of the 91st, where he will oppose Joe DeSoto, a Republican. Rick, good morning. Thank you for calling in today. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Where are you located, Rick? I am located in Inwood, just uh, about a quarter mile west of uh, JD's. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Go get a little sustenance, come back and do the interview. Uh, so, uh, Rick, let's talk about your campaign. Have you run for office before? I have not. What made you decide to run this time? Mm, well, um, honestly, it wasn't uh, expected, but about a year ago, a year and a half ago, I, I approached Marshall and uh, asked how I could uh, help him out. And uh, he expressed a, a need for our uh, district that needs a, a delegate. And, uh, you know, after some deep thought and prayer and uh, discussions with family, and um, we decided that it's uh, it's time. Why the Constitution Party, Rick? Uh, the Constitution Party, I think, it more aligns with, with uh, my beliefs and feelings. I, I was raised in a Republican home, um, and I've, I just don't, uh, I don't like the way that the, the Republican Party has kind of evolved into, um, um, gosh, the words are leaving my mind, but um, basically we've become, uh, we've compromised a lot of our values uh, to continue to maintain or to achieve um, influence, um, and as we've compromised our values, um, I, I think much like a lot of Democrats coming to the Republican Party, the, the party just doesn't match their views in the Constitution Party. Um, I believe that the Constitution is what our country and our states are, are founded by to protect the rights of, of the people, and um, I don't see that happening with the Republican Party anymore. What would be some of your specific differences with the Republican Party, not necessarily on the national level, Rick, because you're running for a state-level office, I like to focus yeah. on West Virginia, but as you see them running the state of West Virginia and have been for the last uh, 10 years, what do you see as some of the fundamental differences there? Where are they going wrong? Well, as, um, as I've, I've only been in the state here for about four years, and I've just in my small search and, and viewing of what's happened, and obviously West Virginia used to be a Democrat-ran uh, majority, um, and as over time, as I think the the populace has become more conservative. Um, the political officials and a lot of part have just changed parties. They haven't necessarily changed their ideals or the values or what they're voting for. Um, they've just changed the party to stay in, in office. And so with that comes a lot of, um, more moderate ideas, uh, not necessarily, uh, I mean, there's some good things that are happening. I mean, especially with the lowering of taxes, uh, those those things are are good. But um, you know, I, I feel that we 
we may end up becoming like a, a California or, or even Virginia down the south of us. You know, they used to be very conservative, and slowly over time, as we become more and more populated, we we tend to lean a lot more left, and and we disregard our our conservative values in order to stay in power. Many Republicans say that they are conservative constitutionalist Republicans, and there is all there is as you are a member a Constitution Party. Mm-hmm. Uh, are many of those folks misdirected in their party affiliation? They should be Constitution Party members, or is there a difference between a Republican who says they are a Constitutionalist and someone who's actually in the Constitution Party? And that's uh, not, that's I, not a I, trick I, question. I, I'm just curious. No, 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 no. I, I, I get it. Um, honestly, I think our first question should be when when we're dealing with legislation and even um, you know in, in securing and protecting the the rights of the people that are are given to us uh, through, you know, our, our creator and um, are outlined by the Bill of Rights, that when we think about these things, that that needs to be our goalpost. You know, we need to think, hey, is this protecting our right to privacy? Is this protecting our right to, you know, assemble? Is this protecting our right to, or is this making it more difficult for, you know, um, us citizens to be able to operate and to live our lives in the pursuit of life, liberty, and, ha- and happiness? Matt Miller. Rick, you mentioned this is your first run at office. What has it been like for you as a candidate? So far, it's been pretty good. Um, Honestly, uh, it all started with uh, having to go out and collect a bunch of signatures, and um, that part was great. Um, I was actually very surprised at the the request for a third party. People didn't want to know about if I was on the Republican ticket or a Democrat ticket. They heard third party, and they said, let me sign. Um, and as I explained what the platform of the Constitution Party was, uh, that was very, very receptive. Um, so that that was the beginning of that. Um, as far as now, as we have a primary um, that has passed and, and a clear candidate in DeSoto, um, now people have, have been outreaching in their um, – excitement for another option besides DeSoto to vote for. Were you able to discern or, or were people very open in giving you an idea of why there's the dissatisfaction with the, the Republican and Democratic parties and saying, yes, we need a third party in there? Um, I, I think to some, to some of it was the binary. You know, people don't want to have to choose one or the other when they're disenfranchised with both. Uh, they feel kind of what I had alluded to with the feeling is the, the Republican Party is no longer, they say they're conservative, they say they're constitutional, but in in the legislation and in the fight for the defending their conservatism, um, they just don't see it. Uh, they see us making the Republican Party making a lot of compromises, and so they, they don't want to compromise. They want their values as they live their lives by values, and they live their lives by by guidelines that have, you know, governed their lives and they would like to see their, you know, their politicians to follow that same. Do you believe it's presented a little bit of a challenge, uh, being from a third party, uh, being able to get your name out there, recognition, uh, let people know that you're in this race for this position? Um, definitely, definitely so, especially, I mean, in, in a presidential election as well. I mean, uh, you know, but again, with even how uh, Donald Trump has ran as, as an outlier as well within the Republican Party, um, people are looking for somebody who's not. And uh, I believe that through the Constitution Party and even seeing Constitution Party, if people are conservative and Constitution-minded and they see that they don't like the Republican candidate, they can you know, hope and trust that somebody in the Constitution Party will stick to more of their values and will re- represent them appropriately. Matt Harvey. Uh, Mr. Thompson, so we, I don't know if you're aware, but Marshall Wilson was on the show earlier this morning. And so I had an opportunity to review the Constitutional Party platform prior to today. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I asked him this, basically the same question is, is, is there a part of the platform that you, that you might disagree with for the Constitutional Party, or do you just adopt it all? Um, no, I mean, for the, for the most part, yeah, you know, I, I, I do believe in following constitutional values. I myself personally am a very uh, religious, faithful person, um, and so that's how I guide my life, by, by my um, 
responsibility and and um, decision to follow, you know, the the moral morals guide by uh, Christian values. Um, I don't uh, necessarily force people, especially being in Constitution, people have the right to make their choices, and um, so long as they're no harming people or, or property. And uh, but with the, I mean, for the most part there really isn't anything that, that I disagree with. Uh, my guideline is the Constitution itself, and so that's what I will go by. There seems to be some similarities to the Libertarian Party, but I, I know once you get down in the weeds, there's some nuances that are definitely different. So why the Constitution Party for you instead of the Libertarian Party? Um, well, because it's, it's, it's the name, Constitution, right? That's not... Uh, I don't believe that people should be able to make their own choices regardless of what have you and free will. Um, there are consequences to certain things, and, and that should be upheld and followed through by the Constitution. Um, I don't look for a libertarian um, a mindset. I look for what's in the Bill of Rights and Declaration of Independence and the Constitution itself. And if those things are in there and, and the laws that we are and, and the things that we are discussing, the way to use funds and uh, should be guided, followed by that. You know, all of us take an oath to the Constitution, whether you're in the sheriff's uh, department or the sheriff or you're an elected official. You know, we we take that oath. So, yes, and so it, it doesn't sound like I, I guess I was wrong. There there probably isn't a, a whole lot of similarities, but you know, they're definitely distinct parties. Um, yeah. And I asked him about the uh, and thanks for that explanation about federal monies. <laughs> uh, the the Platform calls for the for state leaders to reject federal monies for K through 12, and and I thought that was an interesting issue and wanted his take on that, and I'd like yours as well. So the interesting thing about this, and even I thought even in, in school um, when I was in K through well mostly high school kindergarten, I was probably thinking more about chewing gum, but um, and the schools kind of have to follow a federal money get, comes to that school they have to follow whatever is attached to that federal money so across the board they say hey this school needs this in the nation now in in some parts of west virginia they may very well you know need that same program and may need to spend the money in that same way but in a different you know demographic that money may not or in imposing that particular policy in order for them to get that money isn't going to be helpful. That's a waste of money. Um, and then what happens is, is the school districts, they end up becoming addicted to that money, and so they have to do whatever it is that the federal government is asking them to do in order to get that money. Um, if we really want to be autonomous and take care of our own people, um, our own children, then we need to be able to use the money however our particular area needs to use it. But if that if that would require the federal government to re ease the the guardrails or the earmarks on the funding, um, that that's not something that a state delegate could do, right? It, it would it's just accept the money as is or or vote to reject it. Right, and and by by virtue of just not being able to hold on to those earmarks, if it's not beneficial, it, it's beneficial for us to use money in a way that's appropriate. If there was a way to influence, as a state delegate, to influence our you know federal uh, representatives and senators, um, then by that way we can influence the federal, um, at least for on our state level in the federal government, to say hey get rid of these earmarks and just give us the money so that we could use it the way that we in West Virginia need it. So Rick Thompson is our guest here. And Rick, in the grand scheme of things, I agree with you and Marshall on the theory of federal government money. I would, I would love to do away with federal government money's requirements, the strings that are attached, so to speak. And uh, I, I'm, I think I'm the only person who complains about this, for instance, but when you take federal highway money and you have to put it in an HOV lane and you take four what should be perfectly good moving lanes of traffic and you reduce it to three so that six people can go by on an HOV lane while you're waiting there for an hour stuck in the other three lanes, that irritates the living hell out of me. 
on a regular basis. And I love to tell the federal government to take the federal money and the requirements and screw it. We will build our own highways. Right. And in West Virginia, we take in $20 billion a year. $5 billion of that is generated in the state. $15 billion comes from the federal government and associated things with the federal government, which all have strings attached. So while in theory, I like the idea, in reality, in what is already a very poor state, and in some cases the poorest in the union, I, I don't know how rejecting up to 75% of the money ultimately helps benefit the state. I, I, don't, I just don't see how the state survives on what it generates locally. Do you? Um, yeah, I mean, that's it's definitely as we've been able to make it thus far. I mean, with, with the help, of, we've had to be creative in the way that we use the money that we can put forward. Um, again, I think if we try to utilize our influence, and there are many states that are just like us, right, um, that if we kind of reach out to these other states and say, hey, if we put influence on our federal representatives to get rid of some of these earmarks for more of our, our more uh, rurally diverse uh, states, um, it, it really takes a, a coordinated effort to use our influence as state delegates to influence our federal uh, representatives. And if that is the case, if they can create a way that federal money doesn't have these um, markers that we can't necessarily use or are beneficial to us, um, you know, again, we're, we're, we're becoming addicted to something that um, we just won't be able to to um, to use in a better way. Like you said, all of a sudden we have a carpool lane, you know, going through, you know, a part of town that, that, that doesn't need a carpool lane. Now, Martinsburg, you know, sure, if we could add another lane and keep the three that we've been given to go through Martinsburg, that's great. Or even that extra lane, that third lane going from Virginia into, you know, South Berkeley County um, is great, uh, especially with 81 being as, as uh, prone to accidents as it is. Well, I just want to make sure I understand your philosophy on the federal money, and that is would you put the money at risk with the possibility of losing it based on your principles in the Constitution Party or if you saw that this was going to backfire, would you back off on the on those demands with the federal money? My, I mean, again, my my, if it's going to hold our arms to doing something and spending money in an inappropriate way, um, it, eventually, even what happens is is we end up spending our state money to continue to perpetuate the misuse of the money that has been given to us by the federal government. So, inadvertently, we may end up spending more money. Um, that is ours in a way, in a fashion that does not meet the needs of our our population, of our citizens. Um, so, yeah, if it means that we're going to be ending up spending our own money in a way that we don't want to spend our money, then, yeah, I think we should turn it down, figure out how to be how to manage the money that we have in our state better. Rick, let's talk a little bit about some of the issues that, that you are seeing as key issues uh, in the, the 91st and, and in the state of West Virginia and what you would really like to tackle if you're able to win this race. So I see uh, South Berkeley County and in Berkeley County altogether is, is growing immensely fast. Um, so I think uh, tackling that, making sure that, again, that we have – the amenities, the schools, the roadways that um, are appropriate to handle the population growth. Um, I um, want to make sure that those who who wish to continue to own land and farms to be have that land protected to not be out taxed to where they can't afford to have their you know generational land that they've had forever um, to be taken away because they can't afford it just by virtue of the taxes being so high on them. Um, I want the uh, ability for small businesses to feel comfortable and safe in building their businesses and making uh, Inwood and, and Bunker Hill and, and, you know, the South Berkeley County area um, a safe place to have a business for, uh, to handle and to welcome the uh, growing population here in South Berkeley County. So those are all things that I really, um, really hope for um, and hope that the uh, 
also the police, the sheriffs have have the ability and the protection and know that their uh, delegates are are there to support them and the things that they need. I know that uh, Berkeley County has a uh, is that they have a they hired somebody to kind of represent them in the state legislature as well to uh, lobbyists to kind of push and help to support the things that they stand in need of and. Um, maybe if there are things that we support as a delegate, then that we can also help them in that. Rick, what are your, some, some of your major differences with the Republican candidate Joe DeSoto other than some of the ones we've covered? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know too much about DeSoto and what, uh, what he, he honestly, I haven't heard a whole lot of anything from him. The only thing I've seen was the debate that uh, was had for the primaries and, and honestly was rather upset with, spending most of the debate on arguing over who's stealing who signs. So um, as far as I know about DeSoto is that from what I've heard from the people who are almost feeling like they're forced to have to vote for him because they don't have another option is that they don't like him um, and uh, they don't feel that he'll re- represent them. And I hope that uh, with my values and the, the platform of the Constitution Party and um, that people will feel like uh, they can trust me and, and – uh, Hope that I'll be able to uh, sub- to represent them uh, appropriately within the state. Rick, we have invited both you and Joe DeSoto to our campaign forums that we're doing on the 15th and 22nd of October. You have accepted. Joe has declined. Uh, I've offered okay. Joe an interview on this uh, show. He, at this point, has not gotten back to me about whether he'd like to do that or not. So I appreciate your participation. I'll, and I'll get in touch with you about the forum and what that means in regards to your participation uh, Rick, uh, as we get a little closer to that date, Matt, uh, you had a question. Yeah, I was just going to ask about your your campaign, how you're getting your message out to the voters. So, I mean, I'm very, very, very grassroots, uh, you know, volunteers. I have uh, some signs that we just got and uh, hopefully we'll be putting those out. And um, I know that Marshall, whenever he's in town, he does what he can and, and whatever uh, meetings that I'm ever invited to, um, when I'm in town, I love to be at them and to uh, just get my name out there and, and have people meet me and, and talk as best I can and, and share uh, who I am and, and what I believe in and and also to hear what what needs to be done here uh, in Berkeley County. Do you have signs? Do you have signs out, Rick? Um, I do. I do have signs. I'm not sure exactly where, um, but I have a few signs that we've put out and. Um, Still putting out some more. I just got them. I've been in Colorado uh, visiting family. My father had passed away, and uh, so I'm a little bit behind on getting my stack that I've been given. And uh, others, other volunteers have been putting some out as well. So sorry to hear about your father, sir. Our condolences, yeah. uh, Rick. How, how can people find out more about your campaign for the House mm-hmm. of Delegates? Well, um, I definitely refer people to the uh, Constitution Party website, and uh, I do have a Facebook uh, account. I am. As Marshall alluded to, a uh, busy father, um, and I work uh, quite a bit. So right now I just have a Facebook uh, page that I try to uh, keep up to date, um, just to, if showing events that I'm at. If I'm going to be someplace, uh, I'd, I'd, I'll post those things there. Um, I have a website that I'm working on right now. So, uh, But, yeah, trying to get things done and... and uh, so my awareness is really out and handshaking hands, going to meetings and uh, putting the signs out there. And if you can find me at Rick Thompson for West Virginia on Facebook. No P, by the way. Right. No, no P. P. Yeah. yeah, the dirty P. My my great grandfather and great grandmother were both Thompsons. My grandfather was without the P. My grandmother was with the P, and he knocked <laughs> the P right out of her when they got married. <laughs> Silent P. Got it. Thank you, Rick. Appreciate That's your time it. this morning. Hey, thank you.